Okay, good afternoon everyone. We're going to start with News for Lying again today, so we're going to read a couple more chapters. Thank you to those children who have sent me in their answers. Fantastic. Right, chapter 32. Salim and I returned to Mr Singh's printer's yard on, that fr on the Friday feeling extremely pleased with ourselves. I have worked hard on that paper all week, spending days writing in the evenings with Mr McCurdy. Mr Singh opened the door and grabbed us for us to come in. Talking our well, taking our well-thumbed pieces of paper, he told us to come back in an, half an hour after he had made them ready for printing. While we waited, Salim and I went by the rooftop and sat with Shilter as he babbled on about a cockpool fight that was coming up. But not just any fight. This fight will be the fight to end all cockpool fights. Promising Shilter would be back later, we returned to Mr Singh's house, but we didn't feel as confident as we had earlier. I knocked on the door and held my breath. The door swung open and a voice tore through the quiet. You two, get in here now. Salim shook, shook me forward and we walked into the house. Mr. Singh stood with his arms crossed. It was too, it was hard to tell if he was angry because Mr. Singh always looked angry. What in the guru's name is this? He asked, pointing to a various bits of our paper. Not the news you were expecting, said Salim. The words escaped him from his mouth before he had a chance to think. No, not the news I was expecting. Is this part of the assignment then? To write this? 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 Go on, say it, Mr. Singh. You know you want to. These lies? What purpose does it serve to lie like this, eh? We just wanted it to be different, that's all, Mr. Singh. Like a, what if this happened, you know? Salim stammered, looking at me for support. There is a good reason... Will you print it? I asked, my question cutting through Salim stammering. Print this? This scribble? No, I won't print it. It's fabrications, fictions and lies. It will be a waste of ink. Mr Singh sitting back down on his battered stool and shaking his head. Fine, I said and walked out of the house as Salim apologised to a stunned Mr Singh. Marching down the road, I stopped when I heard Salim calling after me. What's the matter with you? If you'd explained it to him carefully, he might have gone for it, said Selene exasperatedly. I worked hard on that paper, Sal, but he's right. It's all lies. Perhaps lies that are spoken aloud merely float away like leaves in the wind, but writing them down creates a record of our lie, our beautiful lie. We heard shouting from behind us in the street and saw Mr. Singh striding towards us. Where are you running off to then, he asked, breathing heavily. You said you won't publish it. What else is there to say, I replied. Selim groaned. Mr Singh put his hands on his hips. There is something more to this, something you're not telling me. Narrowing his eyes, he looked closely at me. Are you Galumbai's son? For a moment I considered lying, but Selim elbowed, elbowed me in the ribs and muttered yes. Mr Singh swore under his breath. We need to talk, he said, and ushered us back to his house where he poured three cups of tea and signalled for us to sit down. I've known your Bapuji ever since I was a small boy. He's older than me by a few years. We went to school together. He pointed to his printing machine and smiled. Did you know that your Bapuji helped me raise the money for this machine? No, I bet you didn't. He was always obsessed with books and printing of any kind, and he felt very strongly that this market town should be able to print its own news and leaflets. As I was the only one who could write and edit and copy naturally, it fell to me to take this on. But without a printer, it was pointless. Your Bapuji convinced the town committee to raise the money and lend it, and lend it to me for a small machine, and so my business was born. Without his help, I'd still... I'm not sure what I'd be doing. I could feel Selim's eyes on me, and I mouthed what at him, and he mouthed back, tell him. If Selim had his way, this whole town will know. Mr. Singh, I began, if you know my Bapuji as well as you say you do, you might understand why I've written this paper. After I'd finished explaining, Mr. Singh flicked through our pages and laughed. A deep, echoing, a deep um, echoing sound around the room. His face was soft now, the look in his eyes more, uh, his face grew softer now, the look in his eyes more gentle. Are you sure about this? I love your Bapuji like a brother. But is this the right thing to do, he asked quietly. What's the alternative, Mr. Singh? He raised his eyes to the ceiling, saying a quick prayer under his breath. Guru, guide us. Yanking the heavy ink-stained cloth from the 
15, Mr. Singh turned to us with his hand on his hips. Leave it to me. I'll get it printed by tomorrow. Go on now. I have to concentrate, concentrate and put this clumsy copy in some kind of order. Get away with you. Chapter 33 Standing in front of the three holies, I looked at my feet. The holy men had tried to visit Bapuji on four separate occasions and each time I'd managed to persuade them that he was asleep or unwell. However, this time they refused to go away. I knew that if I told the three holies, the, mar the whole market town slowly but surely would know the truth, or rather the lie of what I was doing. Even so, if I told them it would, be, it would make our, all our lives easier. Straightening up, I explained what I had resolved to do. You lied to us, cried the reverend. This is morally unacceptable, said the imam. Your back of you must know the truth, added the pandit. What would God think about all of this, exclaimed the reverend. I don't know what God would say because I hadn't asked him, but I think if I did ask him, he would understand, I said quietly. Salim stood to my right, glaring at the three holy men, and Manjeet stood defiantly in front of our doorway, picking his teeth with a little twig. Understand, said the reverend, but my boy, this is an untruth, a lie. Your Bapaji, he's die. Look, bandit, bandaji, imanji, and reverendji, reverendri began Selim, raising his voice. No, Selim, it's okay, I started. No, it isn't okay, he replied, standing in front of me. It's not okay to come and do this outside Bilal's house. It's not okay to accuse people of being something they're not. And it's not okay to, to... Sal, I cried. So please go away and leave us to what we have to do, Selim continued. Began, guide this boy to the truth, said the Pandit. Allah forgive them, started the Imam. I watched... Uh, appreciatively as Selim shouted at the three holies while they wrung their hands and tutted at me. Manjeet continued picking his teeth, amusedly looking on at Selim, on as Selim growled and snapped at them. Eventually I put my hand on Selim's shoulder. Turning around he stopped shouting and stepped back. Looking at each of the three men in turn, I held up my hands. They stopped talking and I could taste the disapproval on the tips of their tongues. You want me to tell you the truth? I asked. As one, they all muttered yes and nodded their assent. Are you sure that's the best thing to do? I asked. Again, they all agreed with a jangle of beads, chains and heavy cloth. Okay then, Pandaji, when you first came here to do your job, you told everybody that you had been taught by a famous guru in Delhi, but everyone knows that you came from Chennai and have never been to Delhi. No, that's not quite, the Pandit spluttered. Imanji, you tell everyone that your son works in an important, in a, in an important government job, but we all know that he is a Dakot and lives in the village near Batalia. Well, no, I mean, yes, he does live near, near Batalia, but he is not. And you, Reverend G, when was the last time somebody came to yours to confession? Ah, well, it's not been a while. It's been a while. It's a bit slow. We're a small community. Reverend G, perhaps it's something to do with the fact that when you get really drunk, you like to tell whoever will listen the confessions of your sheep. Flock, you mean, flock, replied the reverend. You know what I mean, I replied, you all do it. Salim and Manjit were both standing with their mouths open, looking at me. Pushing past them, I opened the door and gestured to the three men. So please come in, I'm sure Bapuji would love to hear your truth, I said. The three holy stood rooted, in, rooted to the spot in the quiet street. We don't want to disturb him if he's sleeping, began the reverend. Yes, he needs his rest. It would do him no good to jabber on with us three old men, followed the imam. Quite right. You give him our best, Balam. Uh, God give him secure, said the reverend. The pandi closed his eyes in prayer. The imam lifted his hands to the sky and swayed as he mouthed a prayer. The reverend flickered his rosary beads and looked into the distance. Thank you for coming, I said. Think nothing of it, my boy. Tell him he's in our prayers, replied the reverend. Watching them go, I slid down against the wall and sat down. Balal, that was, began Selim. I knew that sooner or later people would find out about what I was doing, but I don't feel good about what I just did, I, I uh, replied. But Balal, you, sputtered Selim, struggling to find the words. You told them what, you, what they needed to hear, Balal, said Manji quietly. If they didn't want to hear it, if they didn't want to hear it, they shouldn't do what they do, and they definitely shouldn't tell other what, others what to do. 
Thanks, Manjeet. That makes me feel a little better, I replied. Manjeet nodded and, and slid down next to me. Salim still stood trying to find the right words, but rolling his eyes, he gave up on and slid, slid down too. Did you see the looks on their faces, said Salim, sniggering. It was very funny, replied Manjeet. It's hard to describe. It's almost as if they... I don't know, said Salim. Almost as if they are surprised at hearing the truth said aloud, said Man finished Manjeet. I can understand that, I said, shrugging my shoulders. What do you mean? If you tell a lie long enough, it becomes real. Then the lie no longer exists, and all you are left with is a version of the truth. It must have been some surprise to hear it out, hear it said out in the open like that, replied Manjeet. It must have been like a kick in the teeth, I agreed. Do you think you'll ever feel like that again, asked Selim. No, I will never feel like that. Never, I said. Still, we managed to get the newspaper sorted. Has he read it yet, asked Selim. Mr Singh had made an excellent replica of a newspaper for us, printed on a particular paper so that it would even feel like a real newspaper. Even if he had been pleased with how well it had turned out, he brought the newspaper to the house himself. Proud he had done his bit. I'm going to wait until this evening and then give it to him, so he can read it in the candlelight just before he falls asleep, I said. Think he'll notice? asked Manjeet. I don't think so. He sleeps a lot nowadays, and when he's awake, he is not quite sure where he is. Sometimes he thinks I'm with I'm Ma. Do you want me to stay with you, asked Selim? No, no, go home. I'll meet you on the rooftop tomorrow as usual. As Manjeet and Selim slipped away, I watched the light change. Moving into the house and closing the door behind me, I gathered up the newspaper Bakuji was I gathered up the newspaper. Bakuji was lying in the bed with his eyes open, staring at the ceiling. Bakuji, you're awake. How are you feeling? Bakuji looked at me in surprise. He's not sure where he is. Look, Bakuji, I've brought you a newspaper, I said. Coming back to himself, Bakuji perked up and smiled gratefully. Taking the paper from me, he held it close to his eyes, squinting the candlelight. I sat on the bed, trying to not to fidget as he read it. When he finally put the paper down, he looked at me and beamed. I told you it would be okay, Bilal, he said happily. You were right, Bakuji. Everything will be okay now. I replied. I took the paper from him, prepared his medicine, and settled him down for the night. Okay, we're going to stop there. So we've just done two more chapters. Put the questions underneath the um, comments box. Please reply and send them to me on Purple Mac. See you soon. Bye. Bye.